hello, good afternoon, everyone, or hello, everyone, depending on your time zone. So my name is Stephen Mutimba. I'm the Managing Director of Climate and Energy Advisory uh, Services Limited. I'm also the Director of the course on Climate Information and Services for Long-Term Planning and Decision-Making. So today, I'll just take you through quickly about this course. I'll do a quick introduction about the course. So the course has uh, five modules. And the first module will be on understanding climate information and climate information services. The second module will be discussing about the types and status of climate information and services in Africa. The third module, we will discuss communication of climate information and delivery of climate services in Africa. Then the fourth one, we will deal with the what is the role of climate information and services in development planning and, and policy making? These days we call that governance. What is the role of climate information services in governance? And then we'll also look at um, number five, module number five, which is uh, mainstreaming of climate in uh, uh, mainstreaming of climate information in uh, sexual development or what we call in government, you know? And then uh, the last one will be some evaluation questions. So I just want to now take you through why we are doing this. What is the purpose of this course? The purpose of this course is because Africa is very, very vulnerable to climate change and global warming. And because of the following factors, first of all, the economies of Africa are largely dependent on natural resources. Uh, agriculture depends on rain fed, um, um, rain fed, and the infrastructure is very, very weak. And also when you look at our many development processes, we look at our policies and decisions, they're all affected by the weather and the climate every year. And then the livelihoods of the majority of the continents of, of the people of Africa is that it's sensitive to climate shocks. It's sensitive to rainfall. It's sensitive to hot weather. It's sensitive to flood. It's sensitive to drought. And then a lot of our governments have not put in place strong climate change policies in order to ensure climate resilience. So this course is intended to improve an understanding of climate and climate predictions and use of climate information to serve society's needs better in order to help put in place informed adaptation and mitigation measures. I'm sure you know about mitigation. Mitigation is how you can reduce emissions from the atmosphere and these emissions are the ones which cause uh, global warming. And then adaptation measures is how to cope, how to put in place policies that will ensure that we are coping, we are adapting, or we are becoming more resilient to our, our environment. So we'll also look at uh, how climate information service can facilitate climate smart decisions so that they can assist us to reduce the impact of climate related disasters, how it can help us improve food security, how it can help us ensure that we have a better health for our economies and the people. And also for government to make informed and appropriate plans to deal with climate related impacts, you know, they need to have climate information and climate information service. And uh, the only way vulnerable communities, the very poor, our women, uh, our old people, the youth, the only way we can make sure that we are putting in place uh, adaptation measures that can assist them is to ensure that we are assisted or we know what the climate information and service is all about. And this will also guide adaptation at various levels. So we, we, we also need to plan in every sector. You know, governments are, are run by sectors. 
we've got the agriculture sector, we've got energy sector, we have infrastructure, we have building sectors. All these sectors cannot develop if they are not climate proofed as they need to have been um, shielded from the weather and climate that might impact it. So climate information service comes in very handy in ensuring that our sector development in every, uh, our sector development is taking place and is planned very well. And this can be done by what we call scenario planning, whereby climate information can assist us to, to consider future risks. For instance, in 20 years, what will be the temperatures? You know, in 20 years, how much rainfall shall we have? In 20 years, how will the wind be? So we need to come up with scenario planning and we cannot do scenario planning without understanding climate information and service. And then by doing so also, we have hot spots, you know, areas like uh, when you look at our coasts, most of our countries in Africa uh, have a coast and there's sea level rise that will happen. So the only way to determine which areas are going to be affected by sea level rise is to understand climate information. We also have our rivers and lakes. Some of the rivers and lakes like Chad, you know, they're drying up. And why are they drying up? Because we did not understand climate information. And because we didn't understand climate information, we didn't put in place measures that will ensure that these lakes are not drying up and some rivers are not flooding. So uh, climate information is very, very important when it comes to assisting us in um, risk assessment and risk um, uh, guiding us when we are planning future large infrastructure like dams, ports, roads, in etc. Because it helps us now climate proof those ones. Uh, put in place measures that will ensure that our roads will not be taken away by uh, rainfall. Our ports will not be affected by uh, very high temperatures um, and so on and so on. So Climate information is very, very essential in helping institutions to build capacity to service needs across critical sectors of the economy. And um, one of the main objectives of us doing this, because what I've just given was a background, it was a justification on why we need to understand climate information. So one of the there are three objectives why um, the UNICA, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and UNIDEP are interested in this, in this work. It's because uh, we want to promote and heighten awareness on the use of climate in information and service in our development policies, planning and practice in Africa. We want to make sure that our decision makers our government officers, they understand and they can develop and implement strategies to ensure that we are mainstreaming climate information into all the decisions that we make for the future of our countries. And then we want to make sure that whenever any programs are being done by government, by um, by municipal authorities, by private sectors, by NGO, that they understand how climate information will assist to build resi resilience, uh, to ensure efficiency, productivity in, 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 in all the sectors, making sure that uh, we have stakeholders or we have people in who we govern who understand better how to cope with climate uh, uh, climate change, which is going to affect us all. So after the course, participants will be expected to have a very good knowledge of climate change, climate information, and climate service. They'll also be required to have understood the different ways of um, communicating climate change or climate information, because we have traditional way of doing it. 
and we have a very more modern ways of doing it. We'll also be able to understand the difference between our indigenous knowledge of climate information and the modern knowledge of climate information service. And uh, this information should help us to put in, in place effective uh, development planning uh, policies. That is, if you work in agriculture, you should be able to go back to your country and advise on how climate information is going to ensure that agriculture is planned better, that agriculture is not affected by rainfall uh, badly, it's not affected by drought, by floods. You know, you come up with measures, policy measures that will protect the agriculture sector. If you are from energy sector, you come up with measures that will protect the countries, for instance, hydro electricity or the country's uh, biomass, those of you who use firewood and charcoal, how do you protect that? If you are from infrastructure and transport, how do you make sure that uh, your country is building roads that are, you know, that cannot be affected by very high temperatures, that are not affected by heavy rainfall, that will not be, the bridges that will not be swept away by floods, you know, you need to build strong higher bridges you know that is the purpose of, of this class and then we also will come up with um, skills that can help in um, domesticating you know international treaties for instance if if if, if uh, for those of you who know about united nations framework convention on climate change that's the unfcc if you know about the UNFCC, and the only way you want to come up with policies that will make sure that UNFCC is domesticated or is um, consistent within your country, then you need to understand climate information services. Yeah. And then the last one, which is very, very crucial, is how do we make sure that, um, you know, for everything we do, we have mainstreamed climate change and climate information in, 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 in day to day uh, planning. So, briefly, that is the introduction to the course. And as I said earlier, there are three, there are five modules. And I just wanted to repeat um, what the five modules are. So, module one is uh, understanding climate information and climate services. And then module two will be looking at the types and status of climate information and services in Africa. And then we'll also look at how do we communicate, how do we disseminate um, climate information services, that is module three. And then module four will be the role of climate information in development planning and policy. And module five will be mainstreaming climate information in governance and in sector development. That is the introduction for today. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take.